Okay, so this next unit is about diseases and disease-causing microorganisms. Um, this is going to be a quick overview. You're going to do a virus project. You're going to do labs with bacteria and fungus. Um, and then protists really aren't as important. You'll see that in a second. Um, so we'll start with viruses because you've already started your virus project. Um, characteristics of viruses, they're non-living. Okay, you can find some really good articles out there arguing about whether they're living or non-living because they have DNA, but then they don't have some of the qualities that we think of when we think of living things. Um, it's really interesting. We'll probably do something with it in class. Since they're not living, they're neither a prokaryote nor a eukaryote. So like, they don't have organelles, but they also don't have cells anyway. Um, so don't forget, prokaryotes don't have a nucleus or any defined organelles. Eukaryotes, eukaryotes, they have a nucleus and all those organelles you learned in the last unit. Um, other characteristics of viruses, since they're not living, they're neither a heterotroph nor an autotroph. Um, they reproduce by invading host cells. They're made up of two basic parts, a protective protein outer coat. So we learned that proteins um, help to like build structural things. Um, so protein outer coat called a capsid, and then the inner core, which stores the genetic material, the DNA. Um, because they're non-living, antibiotics are ineffective. You know, when you go to the doctor and you're sick with the flu, and they still don't prescribe you anything. Um, you can't take antibiotics. Um, immunizations can help prevent viral infections. So if you get like the flu shot before flu season starts. Um, and then antivirals are a typical method of treatment if we have them, such as Tamiflu. And then another method of infection, they invade the cell. They reproduce inside the cell until it splits open and destroys the cell. They have either a lytic or a lysogenic cycle. So in the lytic cycle, here's your little virus. Um, he's going to inject his DNA into the cell, and that DNA tells the cell, make this, make this, make this. And so the cell now works as like a factory for assembling more viruses till it can't hold anymore, and then the cell bursts open, the cell dies, and then all these viruses are now released into you or whatever the infected organism is. The lysogenic cycle, here's your virus here. He still inserts his DNA, but the DNA actually gets um, like encrypted into the DNA of the cell. So then the cell goes about its business and reproduces, reproduces, reproduces until tons of cells have this little viral DNA in them. And then eventually it'll switch over to the lytic cycle because you have this viral DNA in your cells. But then you'll have multiple cells going through the lytic cycle with tons of viruses bursting out of them. And this is similar to how like HIV works um, and herpes. Um, it's harder to get rid of because the DNA is actually in your cells and you'll always have some cells in this stage and then eventually getting to this stage. So you, if you can wipe these out, you'll still have some of your own cells will be infected. So it's one of those viruses you're infected with forever. Um, so common viruses, the cold, flu, HIV and AIDS, um, chicken pox, polio, rabies. Um, a lot of these, I mean, not the flu, you guys all get the flu all the time. Um, but viruses or vaccines have been um, invented um, and discovered to help eradicate these viruses. So, like, you guys all got the chickenpox vaccine when you were little, so you guys don't tend to have it as much, whereas everyone who's about my age all had chickenpox when we were little. Um, polio, there's a vaccine for that, so you don't see that as much. Okay, so that's everything for viruses. Bacteria um, are living. They're prokaryotic. There's no nucleus. Um, they're a single-celled organism, and there's both good and bad bacteria. People always hear bacteria, and they're like, oh, bad, gross, but there's actually good bacteria. There's bacteria in your intestines that help you digest food, um, and there's bacteria in, like, yogurt and stuff. Um, so bacteria are, can be both heterotrophs and autotrophs. So heterotrophs get their food from other organisms. Some bacteria are autotrophs and can actually photosynthesize. Um, they grow really, really fast. Um, by either asex mostly by asexual reproduction, binary fission, their cells just split into two cells. Um, or they can sexually reproduce. Conjugation, two cells will get together, exchange DNA, and then reproduce. Um, they come in three different shapes, spiral, round, and rod-shaped. Um, there's approximately five nonillion bacteria on Earth. It's five times ten to the thirtieth. So it's a lot. Um, and then blah blah bacteriology. Okay, so there's three shapes. Spherical bacteria, you can always tell by their names what their shape is. So like if you've ever had strep throat, you have the streptococcus bacteria, and that suffix tells you that it's spherical. Okay, if they have like lactobacillus, which is in yogurt, that bacillus, the suffix, tells you that it's rod-shaped. And if it's a spiral shape, the suffix will be like spirilli or spirillum, which is nice because it actually sounds like it. 
Um, so you go and there's some pictures. And we'll look at bacteria in class later next week, I think. Um, and then the method of infection for bacteria, they invade your cells directly. Um, some produce toxins which damage your cells, but they can all be treated with antibiotics. Anti against bio, life, bacteria, okay? It's so like if you're ever prescribed amoxicillin or ciproflaxin, those are um, antibiotics to fight bacterial infections. So common bacteria, strep throat, TB, anthrax, um, bubonic plague, E. coli. There you go. All right, protists. Um, the kingdom of protists, they're like misfits. They don't fit in anywhere. Um, they have a variety of characteristics, so they don't really fit in with any kingdoms. The common kingdoms are bacteria, fungus, plants, and animals. They're none of those. They're like something in between. Um, they're very different. You can see over here the examples. Um, like of Euglena, it doesn't look anything like a Chrysophyta. doesn't really look anything like these guys down here. Um, they are living. They are all eukaryotes, so they all have a nucleus. There's, they're divided into three subcategories, plant-like, animal-like, and fungus-like. Like, it's not very sophisticated. Um, they usually grow in wet places. Most are heterotrophs. Um, they have three different forms of movement, a flagella, which is like a tail, a pseudopod, which is like a – it's called false foot, really, um, which is when part of like the cytoplasm stretches out and then it like pulls the rest of the cell along with it. And then cilia, which are like little hairs around the outside of the cell that kind of like flap and wave to push the cell along. Um, some protists are pro parasites to humans, which is why you need to learn about them. Your method of getting infected with a protist – Usually it comes from drinking contaminated water, sometimes from contaminated food, rarely from sustaining an insect bite. Um, these are some common protists. I would make sure you just recognize the names like diatoms, protozoans, flagellates, amoeba, paramecium, euglena. Um, algae, like seaweed, is a protist. It's not very likely to make you sick. And then the last group, the fungi. Um, obviously living, eukaryotic, their cells have nuclei. They're heterotrophs. Um, they use spores to reproduce. They're decomposers, which we talked about when we talked about food webs. Um, and some are parasites to humans. Um, they can be classified to club fungus, sac fungus, and zygote fungus, which is like yeast that you use to make bread, mold that grows on your bread. Um, and then methods of infection. So the spores from fungi, um, like basically the spores like are really, really tiny, and then they can float through the atmosphere. Um, so if a spore then lands on you, it can survive on damp surfaces and infect your skin. So, like, you've seen people get athlete's foot, like, in that gross space between your toes. Once they're there, they're going to reproduce either asexually by budding, which, again, is, like, splitting and making two cells from one, or sexual reproduction. Um, hyphae will grow between two cells, and they'll exchange their genetic information and reproduce. Um, so some common diseases are, like, fungal meningitis, tinea, athlete's foot, ringworm. Um, it's gross. Okay, I know that was long, so I'm just going to stop.